Welcome back to Honest News. One thing I see over and over in society is children, whether they be young or old, that are looking for their father's approval, for their father's acceptance, for their father's praise. And I believe that's because we're all made in the image of God. <clears throat> and uh, as his creation, we are all looking to be accepted of him. Unfortunately, those that are deceived are looking in the wrong place. I believe that's why the Lord says, look up. Our redemption is drawing near. Because we need to know where we need to be accepted. And I believe Jesus Christ teaches us that he did not look for the praise of men. He didn't look for the acceptance of men. There was only one place that Jesus Christ was looking. And that was to the Father. Are you listening? His whole ministry, but his whole life while he was on the earth, he was constantly looking to please the Father. In fact, that's why he came. Not to do his own will, but the will of the Father. That's what you and I should be looking for, the ultimate. We should be looking for the praise and the acceptance of our Heavenly Father. If we fall short of it, how many know that's sin? To miss the mark, to fall short of his glory, that is sin. If we're not accepted of him, we're going to be lost forever. It's that simple. Going to be lost forever. And not just lost, but in torment. I wonder how many are in hell right now that are tormented with the thought if I could only do it over. If I could only do it over. I wonder if the demons are screaming in their ears day and night, where there is no day and night, where there is no time. Too late. Too late. It's too late. <clears throat> Thank God it's not too late for us that still have breath in our lungs, that are still on this earth. We can do something about the direction we're going in. We can do something about the time we have left on this earth. We need to be redeeming the time because the days are evil. We need to not take light of the time we have. I want to share a message with you <clears throat> this afternoon To the praise of his glory. To the praise of his glory. We'll be right back after this.
Matthew chapter 3 in verse 17. And lo, a voice from heaven. That should get our attention. A voice from heaven. Let's not make light of that. Voices don't come from heaven all the time, people. This is quite strange. This is something that's out of the ordinary. This is extraordinary. Extraordinary. A voice from heaven? This voice said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That's all he needed. To have the father's acceptance, to have the father's approval. Just before he's about to go into his ministry. Ordained by God. This is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, that there is acceptance with you. Not in our own righteousness. Not in our own works. Of righteousness, but accepted in the beloved by your grace. That you would even praise your work that you have done in the lives of those that allowed you to, to the praise of your glory. To receive your endorsement, Lord, that your name would be written upon us. That you endorse your work that you have done in us. To the praise of your glory. To be accepted of you. It's all that matters. Nothing else matters. Is to be Accepted by you. To the praise of your glory by your grace. I pray, Heavenly Father, that those that listen to this message will look up more than they've ever looked up. That they will yearn within themselves, groan within themselves, to wit the redemption of their body, to be caught up unto God and to his throne. To be accepted in the beloved. To be accepted in your righteousness, Lord. That we won't fall short of your glory anymore. We ask that you bless and that you anoint as we minister your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Can you imagine hearing a voice from heaven that says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. It's not the only time he did it, as we will read. Not once, but twice. Twice in the scriptures or two times, often times as a witness. The father was witnessing to the son on the earth. Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. Jesus was transfigured in the mount with three of his disciples present. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud 
overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud. A voice, people. It's so easy to just take that for granted. But what if it was you? What if you were the one that was experiencing this? And that voice came because of you. That God the Father was speaking of you to others to let them know that he was pleased with your life. Jesus needed no other endorsement. He needed no other acceptance. By now you should be looking up. By now you should be looking up. You should not be looking around. You should not be looking for the approval of man. You should not be looking for the approval of a loved one. You should not be looking for the approval of your spouse. You should not be looking for the approval of your parents anymore. You should be looking up. How many right now in this world that don't know Jesus, and even those that know Jesus, they don't even pray to the Father as Jesus taught. And they still don't know the acceptance of the Father. They don't know if the Father's pleased with them or not. That should be the only thing that matters to us. I'm in a pursuit, brothers and sisters, and that is for his approval. Doesn't matter to me what people think about me. It really doesn't. And I don't say that smartly or to be arrogant. I'm saying to you, there's only one approval that I'm looking for. Are you listening? Some are going to hear him say, well done. Huh? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Praise the Lord. This voice came from heaven again. A bright cloud overshadowed them. This is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. Did you hear me the first time? If you didn't, I'm telling you again. The same ones that are hearing this were the ones that were present. Is that true? No. No. God spoke from heaven when Jesus was baptized and anointed. The disciples hadn't been called yet. Are you listening? This is the first time that these three disciples out of the 12 are experiencing God the Father speaking from heaven. And they don't know what to do with themselves. Peter is so beside himself, he blurts out, it's good for us to be here, isn't it? Should I make some tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah? Are you listening, people? When God spoke, when the Father spoke, basically when he said to them, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. It was his way of saying, be quiet, Peter. Hush. You talk enough. Now listen to my son. He is speaking for me. He will give you instruction. He will tell you all my heart, all my will, if you'll listen to him. If there's ever been a time that God's people need to hush, need to be quiet, need to learn to be quiet. Even when you pray, you should spend more time listening than you do talking. You should be listening most of the time in prayer. It's more important what he has to say to you than what you have to say to him. Can you say amen? How much time do you spend in prayer listening? 
And even when you're not praying, because we're supposed to be praying without ceasing, but throughout the day when you're meditating and going through the day, how much time during the day, no matter what you're doing, are you listening intently for his voice? You're looking for his instruction. You're looking for his guidance. Or do you just aimlessly go on your way without any thought? If you're even in the Father's will. Hmm? Do you even know if you're in the Father's will? Do you even care if you're in the Father's will? Do you have a peace that rules in your heart? The Bible says, let the peace of God rule your heart. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Does the peace of God rule in your heart? If that peace leaves you, or if you're not experiencing that peace, there's something wrong. He's letting you know something's not right. Are you listening? Long as that peace is there, everything's right with God. You have peace with God. But if that peace isn't there, something's wrong. Something is amiss. Are you listening? Praise the Lord. They weren't experiencing peace when the Father spoke from heaven. Listen to the next verse. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. That's not peace. That is not peace. Why were they not experiencing peace? This is the God of peace. It's because they didn't have peace with him. They weren't at peace with God. Are you listening, people? This is all about being accepted of the Father. This is all about having peace with God. You know, when you have peace with the Father, no matter what comes your way, no matter what storm, no matter what blows your way, no matter what it is. You have that calm in the storm. I don't need to understand. All I need is to do is hold his hand. I don't need to ask the reason why. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, when we go through things in this life, you're not going to get an answer from God. He just wants you to put your trust in him. He'll get you through it. He'll get you through the flood. He'll get you through the fire. He'll bring you to the other side if you'll trust in him. But don't expect that God's going to give you an answer to every question you have and everything you desire to know. Sometimes it's better for you not to know. How many know putting your trust in God is not knowing every little thing? If God sees fit you need to know something, he'll let you know. If it's necessary, if it's pertinent, are you listening, people? You can be highly ranked in the military and still not be in that position, need to know basis. Are you in a place, need to know? You may not need to know. Are you listening? And oftentimes we get in God's way when we know something we don't need to know. Are you listening, people? John chapter 17, verse 20. Jesus says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. How many know he's speaking about us? Jesus was praying for us. Isn't that wonderful? I'm praying also for those that believe on me through their words. That they all may be one. Talking to you about to the praise of his glory, people. To the praise of his glory. Not our glory. Not man's glory. Not to receive the praise of men. 
but to the praise of his glory. That they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. What is that glory? That they may be one. Even as we are one. He's not talking about globalization. He's not talking about a one world religion. He's talking about his people being one. Talking about the believers, his people, those that have been born again, born of the spirit, regenerated. Are you listening? Those with their names written in the Lamb's book of life. That they all may be made one. This is the glory of God, brothers and sisters. I in them, thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. Doesn't get any better than that. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me. And has loved them as thou has loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Do you see what the Lord is saying? The ultimate. To behold his glory. Where he is. Where he he actually resides. Where he abides. In the throne with the father. He's calling us to the throne people. He's calling us up to the throne. Is anybody listening? Do you hear the call? Do you hear the upward call? That's what Paul was talking about when he talked about the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Are you listening, people? Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned. That includes you. That includes me. For all have sinned. Including the Jews. And come short of the glory of God. You know what it means to come short of the glory of God, people? It means to be not on time. In other words, you're not in time with God. You're not in sync with him. You're not in agreement with him. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Go out or have someone do it. Maybe an old clunker, old car that still runs, but you don't care about it. Mess up the timing on that vehicle. See what happens. The engine will destroy itself if it's not in time. Do you see why it's so important, people, for us to be in time with God? If you're not in time with God, you will self-destruct. You will destroy yourself, which is what the world is doing right now. Are you listening, people? There was a pastor one time asked God, he said, how far are you going to let this go, Lord? Father, how how far are you going to let this go? And God the Father said, not much further. He said, because if I let this go any further, he said, the fools are going to blow themselves up. 
Anybody listening? That's what they're saying in this world right now, the, the United Nations. We're on the brink of destruction in this world. We've never been closer in this world to annihilation as a people on this planet. That's what they're saying. That's what the United Nations leader is saying right now. Are you listening? It could happen over this visit of Pelosi right now. Her greed uh, to go over there and make money, probably for her and the Bidens. Putting greed before the country. Are you listening? She's not over there for, for the country. She's not over there for you and I. She's not over there for the people. Must be a whole lot of money to be had to put the whole country at jeopardy. Are you listening, people? They say we're on the brink right now of annihilation as a species. The whole world going into a nuclear war. I think the last time they counted was 12,000 warheads globally. Nuclear warheads. I myself have seen the nuclear weapon hit in the United States in a vision. And in a dream. And I asked the Lord afterwards, I said, what's this? And the Lord said, only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked, but it shall not come nigh thee. I've seen it, people. I've already seen the horror of nuclear destruction. You know what it looks like? It looks like a storm. Everything's blowing. I mean, I saw the big tankers of, of trains flying through the air like they were toys in the nuclear blast. Anybody listening? I saw the white blinding light. I saw a bridge about the size of George Washington vaporize right before my eyes in a white blinding light. I've seen it. I don't have to be here to experience it. I've seen it. We are on the brink in this world right now. When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman, and they shall not escape. Do you know why the scripture places that together with a travail of a woman? Because at the same time, destruction is coming. The man-child is being birthed, caught up to God and to the throne. Anybody listening? As travail that comes upon a woman with child. It's exactly what we read in the book of Revelation. So listen, brothers and sisters, as, all, as long as we are not accepted in the beloved, as long as we're not accepted by God, by his grace, we're still falling short of the glory of God. I hear thunder outside, and I hope the power doesn't go out before I finish. Lord, hold it back. Get this message done. I don't think the devil likes this message. Not that he's, not, not that it's storming outside because I'm preaching, but <clears throat> I'm sure he would like to shut this computer down. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Again, this has to do with being on time, being prompt, not being late. Many are going to be late. Most of the church isn't even going to make it to the wedding. They're going to miss it. That is sin, by the way. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. This has to do with sonship. This has to do with the redemption of the purchased possession. 
to the praise of his glory, brothers and sisters. Again, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Do you see what God is saying? As long as we're not to the praise of his glory, we're falling short of his glory. We're still in sin. We still need God to deliver us. We still need his help, brothers and sisters, that we might be accepted of him, that he might be pleased with us. Look up, brothers and sisters, for his acceptance. Look up for his approval. Look up for his praise. Amen. Don't seek the praise that comes from man. Seek the praise that only comes from God. God bless you.